In this episode of our series on economic data releases, we cover a big one. It's the PMI release, which stands for the Purchasing Managers Index, and this is a monthly release that tries to measure the conditions in the two primary sectors of services and manufacturing. So let's go through what it is, how it relates to other economic data, and how it impacts the market. And if you'd be so kind as to impact the like button to support the channel, that would be fantastic. In terms of reliable indicators, PMI is probably one of the best that we have. It asks purchasing managers for factual information on a range of variables that include new orders, output, employment, and prices, and it asks them whether they're above, below, or the same as the previous month. Then the overall results are shown in the headline figure. The headline is usually split between three different releases. So you have the manufacturing PMI release, the services PMI release, and then the composite figure, which combines services and manufacturing. Now, services usually make up the biggest part of GDP for most developed nations, but recessions usually begin and end in the manufacturing sector, which makes the manufacturing PMI figure also just as important to follow. Now, the way it works is that the headline uses 50 as the baseline. Above 50 shows expansion, and below 50 shows contraction. And the further the release is above or below 50, the stronger the expansion or contraction. The most popular release comes from Market, which covers a number of countries around the world. So if you're looking for a PMI release in a specific country, it's likely that Market's going to cover it. However, some countries also have releases from other information providers. For example, the ISM is another popular PMI index, but that one is just covering the US. If we compare ISM and market PMI, they can diverge and sometimes give conflicting signals since they both use a different methodology. So that means not all PMI releases will be equal and carry the same weight, but that doesn't mean the less followed ones are any less important to look at. For example, the ISM focuses on multinational companies and surveyed companies can also include US owned factories in foreign countries. On the other hand, market PMI has a broader range of companies in the survey, but only reports on factories and facilities on US soil. So that means the ISM release is better for identifying trends in big multinational companies, but the market release will be better for gauging the health of industries that are just in the US and for smaller ones. Market released a paper on interpreting PMI data, and this diagram that they have shows the boom-bust cycle and how the variables, the questions being asked, relate to a number of important stages. So here's what Market had to say about the diagram. During a period of economic expansion, it's typical for employment to rise and unemployment to fall, and the demand for raw materials to increase. If employment and demand for raw materials rise at suitably fast rates, it is then common for skill shortages and supply chain bottlenecks to develop. When demand exceeds supply, prices tend to rise, wages and salaries and raw material prices will therefore begin to increase, retail price inflation may then pick up as higher costs are passed on to the consumer. The standard economic policy prescription for rising high street inflation is an increase in central bank base rates, which, by raising borrowing costs to business and the consumer, restrains demand. Prices and economic growth then tend to grow at slower rates. When demand has slowed sufficiently, interest rates may be lowered again, thus stimulating economic growth. As far as economic releases go, PMI is one of the most important because it can be used to estimate changes in GDP, gross domestic product. Click up there if you're not sure what that is. So quarterly PMI has an 85% correlation with GDP and on a coincident basis, which means without any lags, it has an 83% correlation. So this means you could build a formula that allows you to estimate the implied growth in GDP from the PMI reading each month and changes above or below a specific PMI reading would result in specific growth or decline in GDP. It also carries importance as it's released before other official data releases and can therefore anticipate changes in trends across a range of different data sets such as GDP, industry, production, employment and inflation. 
Along with this, many companies will also use the PMI data for business planning. You know, the results about supply and demand may affect the prices that suppliers choose to charge. If orders are increasing, they might increase prices and be more willing to pay more to their own suppliers as well. Whereas if orders are de decreasing, they may decide to lower prices. So we can see how important a PMI release is in the markets as well. When the data is released, usually there's an increase in volatility, there's a bit of a reaction in the markets, and therefore bigger movements. So not surprising, it's one of the most important releases of the month for the specific economy it relates to, and it can have a major impact on currencies, bonds, and other asset classes as well. So if you found this video helpful, please do hit that thumbs up button. And if you want to know more about other economic releases, Click this playlist here to watch the series so far and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the future ones. We're going through all the economic data releases to show how they relate to each other and how they impact your performance in the markets. Thanks for watching. Take care.